I keep kind of expanding my drum thing. A lot of people just only put two wide overhead mics up, and uh, that's standard classic. But then I stick in the middle of the drum an SF24, which is a Blumline pair, coming down. And that is grabbing, like, you know, this, going like this, where these are here, and it seems to fill out this whole sort of three-dimensionality from the top of the kit. Right. And, the, and it gives, since the Blumline pair SF24 is perfectly in phase, once I dial in my phase between those, you know, basically three mics, even though it's four diaphragms, um, I get just really great punch out of the center and a really nice smoothness. And then out of the sides, I get, you know, very detailed clarity of left and right. And that right off the bat creates a really sort of nice spaciousness on the drums. I've always used a mono room mic, and for me, the mono room mic is what gives the center of the kit. It's what gives that 12, you know, 10 to 12 foot back. It gives the whole drum kit with one microphone, which sounds like you have a bunch of microphones going, but one microphone in front of the kit, placed correctly, can actually give you the whole drum kit. So I've always used one microphone in front of the kit. We have the uh, uh, 122V in front of the kit. And I like ribbon because it allows me to get a, a certain amount of grit and punch. When he brought me the SF24, I just figured, okay, I'm going to put this right on top of that capsule so that I have no phase anomaly whatsoever. And I'm going to go this way again, like almost like the overheads, but not really. I'm going to go this way with the Blum line. And then this is figure eight this way. So now I'm capturing this. I'm front and back, side and back. I'm getting it all from... Right. Two, two microphones, you know, right. three capsules, two microphones. Right. And that setup for me has been following me around now um, for, you know, five or six years because to me, I get the whole drum kit out of that right, right there. So I've got the drum kit on the over and I got the drum kit in front and then I'm filling in the clarity with the close mics.
I came in this room and it was like, well, let's try something new. You know, you always want to try something new. So um, we had a couple more 122 Vs, and um, I said, well, and for me, like with Rumbo, where Kenny and I did a lot of work and, and we copied that studio for John and Belmont, um, we always went up in the corners. And I've been recording corners, and, you know, it's basically you're getting, you know, the the reflection coming back at you. And it's always a nice, dense, thick, really cool sound if it works. And if not, then it doesn't, you know. So I put mics way up high in the ceiling in the corners just to get some serious good rock and roll going. Those mics actually sound really cool. That's two micro. That's just two microphones, you know. And that's kind of like I mean, you know, you can get into soloing up like what each mic is doing, but that gives sort of this rock and roll trash to the drum sound. And so for me, it's like depending on what a song is going to entail, will be the amount of blend of whatever I'm doing. It's not like I use the same blend on every single song when I'm mixing, but right. basically I have all these options there. I have all these options there. Right. Sometimes it's like keeping the rooms way down until the chorus comes in and exploding that in the mix or something. Right. But it basically I don't I'm not a guy that likes reverb on drums. I don't really want fake reverb on drums when you got a room and you can record it well. So right. yeah, to me that's like everything is like in the recording here. Yeah.